Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another installment of It's Not You, It's M.E. My occasional series of videos on using the Mission Editor in DCS. And now specifically, this is the fourth episode on using basic Lua scripts in DCS. If you haven't watched the first three, you might want to go back and do that. It will probably make a little bit more sense. Now, this episode fulfills a promise that I made a couple of videos ago. Specifically, uh, when I made a short video to see if we could recreate the bridge scene in the trailer from the movie Devotion, I noted that I needed to use a script to kind of enhance the rockets so that they would actually take down the bridge, and I said I would make a video to show how that was done. Uh, but before I do that, I want to step back a little bit and talk in general about how scripts can be used in DCS. So I'm just going to grab the whiteboard here. Now, to date, we've actually been using scripts in a pretty limited way. Uh, we've been using what I would call one-time or single-use scripts. These scripts uh, are called by a trigger in response to some condition determined by the trigger system. A lot of the things that we have used the scripts for are actually things we could have done with triggers, including actually the set task stuff we did in the last video. Um, that could easily have been done with triggers rather than a script. That doesn't mean, though, that scripts aren't useful. There's a lot of good reasons to use scripts instead of triggers. Um, the first of those reasons is that triggers are eh, a little bit arcane, a little bit opaque. If you're used to writing code, maybe even if you're not, using a script is just a lot more transparent, and it also provides an opportunity to actually add some debugging. Uh, finally, it also adds a little bit more positive flow control, so you can make sure the statements are executed in the order you want them to be, which again can be done with triggers, but you really do have to work at it. But there is actually another much more powerful way to use scripting other than the one-time ways that we've been doing it, and that is to basically replace the whole trigger system with, let's call it a mission script, meaning that we simply call that script when the mission starts, uh, and that may be the only trigger in the whole mission. All of the mission controls are then handled by the script. So instead of actually being called by an external trigger, the script is loaded and runs in the background the whole time, monitoring what is happening in the mission and responding appropriately. Now, in order to use a script this way, we need to talk about the concept of an event handler. In DCS terms, an event handler is a call to a function that checks to see if any number of events have occurred, and when one of those events does, the function returns data on what has just happened. Now, both MIST and Moose, the two scripting extensions for DCS, have some very powerful event handlers. I'd go so far as to say they're really built around their extensions to the basic DCS event handling, which is why they're so useful and so powerful for creating very detailed missions with very complicated interlocking parts and logic. Um, now, that stuff is way beyond what would be possible with the trigger system. And talking about the capabilities of those kind of scripts, by the way, is in no way basic scripting. And I'm not going to talk about that in this series as much as anything, because it really goes beyond my level of incompetence in scripting. But we still can take a look uh, at the event handling at its most basic level, because that's actually what I used in the Riverbridge uh, Devotion video. So let's take a look at the basic DCS event handler that comes with the base game. Okay, so here's the Hoggett Wiki entry for the DCS function add event handler. You can see that the description says that it adds a function as an event handler when a simulator event occurs. So you can see what we do down here is we uh, call this function world uh, dot add event handler here and we just give it a function. We call that function E, and then we define what happens when the event actually occurs by our definition of the function E. And we have to use the method on event. Uh, so we define a, a local uh, function called E, and then we call it with a, uh, uh, with a on event method that basically sends when an event occurs, it's going to get, uh, it's going to get a table that describes what's happened in that event, and then we can do things based on the table that it passes back. So don't necessarily have to understand all of what I just said. I'm not sure I do. But you need to understand that the, the essentially the form is you call world.addEventHandler, 
and you get passive function name e. That's really got to be the last statement in your file because that's going to be the last thing that executes because once it starts executing, it's just going to keep checking to see if events occur. When the events occur, it's going to pass a table called event to this function and then that is going to determine what actually happens. Now, what we're going to be interested in doing is trapping a hit event because what we're going to do is check to see if the bridges are hit and if the bridges are hit we're going to do something different than the game would normally do basically we're going to blow them up so we're going to trap the hit event which if we come over here you can see this is what happens if the event hit is trapped first of all uh, the event id is going to be two so if the event ID is 2, uh, then that will be the condition that tells us that it's a hit event. It's going to give us the DCS time when the hit occurred, and then it's going to pass three different uh, classes. Uh, it's going to pass the unit, the weapon, and the object. Now we've seen unit and object before. We don't really need to worry too much about weapon. All we need to know is that we need to write a piece of code that says when something is hit, we want to write a function that tests whether or not it's the right thing. And if it's the right thing, the bridge, then we're going to blow it up. So before we actually look at that code, let's go look in DCS about how we're actually going to set up this mission. Okay, here we are in DCS. Uh, in the mission editor, it's a very simple mission. There is really just one thing on screen, and that is the fighter plane. It's a P-47D-40, and it is armed with... HVAR rockets. Five HVARs on each side. Now, the problem with this is that the rockets that were actually used against that bridge that is modeled uh, in, that's the subject of the, the film Devotion, they weren't actually HVAR rockets. It turns out they were something called Tiny Tims, which are several times larger than an HVAR. They're basically based around a 250-pound uh, bomb uh, with a big rocket on the end of it. Um, and they were actually used for taking out things like bunkers and buildings and, and other infrastructure. So um, although they don't, the rockets in the movie trailer don't really look like Tiny Tim's, they don't look that large, but that's in, in actual fact in, in, uh, in the real mission, that's what they were. So they might very well have been big enough to take out the bridge, but unfortunately we don't have Tiny Tim's, we've only got HVARs in DCS. So what we're going to have to do is give them a little bit of help. So I looked at lots of different ways of figuring out uh, how to give them some help. Um, you could have said, well, let's track the rockets and just make the explosions bigger, for instance. That wasn't a reliable way of taking down the bridge. There's just some issues with the way uh, DCS handles splash damage and structures. Turned out that really the easiest way to make this happen is just to actually, if the rocket hits the bridge, let's just put an explosion on the bridge and then the bridge will fall down. So the bridge that we're looking at attacking is over here. So one little trick that we can use, I'm not sure if you're aware of, if I click on this segment of the bridge and then right click on the on that segment of the bridge, so I right click, then I click left click on a sign as, I'm gonna get a little zone here and you can see it's only a third of the bridge. But the key is that I'm gonna get an object ID. This is the object ID of this scenery object in DCS. And I need to make note of that because that is what we're going to use when we test to see if, if the bridge is hit, we're going to use it uh, the object ID to determine if it's the right object. So there's three. So we need to right-click here, click Assign As, and now we're going to get a second object ID. And finally, we're going to get a third object ID. So we've got three bridge segments. They're now defined as zones. The important thing is that they each have an object ID. So with that in hand, we now have enough information to go uh, write a script. And just to to a little bit of foreshadowing here, what we're going to do, we're going to load mist, although I don't think we actually need it, but I'm just kind of in the habit of doing that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to load uh, a script that we're going to write uh, called check hit bridge rocket. Uh, and that's all we're going to do. And then that script is going to stay running in the background the whole time. And it's always going to be monitoring to see whether or not anything happens in DCS. And we just have to write it so that when something is hit, it needs to test whether or not it's one of our three bridge segments and if it is, we need to blow up the bridge. So let's go see how we write a script that does that. Okay, so you can see that I have the script uh, up here on screen that we're gonna write, and it's a very basic script. It, uh, the, the last function call is the world.addEventHandler call, which as we've seen is the last thing you write 
because then that's going to uh, stay running and uh, trap all of the events that happen. And every time an event is trapped, it's going to call this function called E. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, we're only going to be interested in the hit events, and that's uh, we'll do that through the function. For what it's worth, you may notice that there's some comment lines here. These are just the things to uh, that remind me of what the contents of the event table are for a hit event. Okay, so here's the function E that is called every time uh, the event handler records an event. So the very first thing we do is check to see if it's a hit event. If the event ID is 2, it's a hit event. Then we're going to run the rest of the function. If it's not a hit event, we're not going to do anything. Now, this local variable m, uh, this is a little bit of a, a Lua uh, hack. This is uh, just going to be an easy way of writing uh, a message that we want to write uh, every time uh, we hit the bridge. And so m is basically a table that contains the contents of the message that we're going to write. Don't need to worry about that too much. The first variable we're really interested in is unit. Uh, unit is going to be an instance of the class unit because the initiator part of the event table is a unit. So we're basically finding out who fired the weapon, and it's going to be an instance of the class unit. Uh, Wep type is going to actually be the category of the weapon that was fired. So event.weapon uh, is of uh, an instance of the class weapon. And when we use the method getCategory, it's going to give us the type of weapon. I'll hopefully understand all of that. Uh, Lua Ease, uh, if you read, if you watched the video a couple videos ago about object oriented programming. So if we actually get a non zero unit, then we're going to start building our message. Uh, this is what this statement does, and it's going to use the get name. So it's going to use the name of the unit that was returned as the initiator. Okay, so far. The last variable that we're going to produce is something called target. Target is going to be an instance of the class of object, and it's going to be the object that we actually hit. And this is important because if that uh, object is one of the three that we looked at that are actually the parts of the bridge, then we're going to do something. So assuming the target that we've actually hit a target, so it's a non-zero object, then we're going to uh, get the target name is going to be uh, an application of the get name method to the uh, to the variable target. And we're also going to get its location. We're going to call that target pause. And uh, just so you remember, target pause is a get point. That's going to be a three vector. I don't think we're actually going to use that. That's probably part of an older version that I used. But at any rate, um, so there's only three things that we really are worried about. There's three target names that we might be interested in. We wrote them down from, from DCS. Those are the three segments of the bridge, and those happen to be these numbers. If you're keeping track, you can go back and check to see I'm not lying to you. But if any one of those things happens, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, basically, we're going to construct our message to say that our unit hit the bridge, and then we're going to uh, print that text to the user and say, you hit the bridge. We're going to add one to the hit counter uh, just because. Uh, not using that uh, flag 105 that is the hit counter, but I'm passing it back in case, for instance, I wanted to count the number of times I hit the bridge. Not using that in the current script, but I could. And then the last thing we're going to do, which is the, the money statement, is we're going to trigger an explosion using the trigger action explosion, and, and we're going to make it of size 500, and we're going to make it at the location of the target. So I lied to you. We do actually use the, the vector location, but we don't even need to worry about uh, separating out the variable. We just basically say so wherever the target was, we're going to trigger an explosion there. It's going to be size 500. And I just from experience, I can tell you that that is going to be large enough to drop the bridge. And so we're going to do that if we hit any one of the three bridge segments. We're going to go through all of that. We're going to say we hit the bridge. And then we're going to trigger an explosion at that position. It's going to be big enough to destroy the bridge. That's all we have to do to make sure that our rockets are actually big enough to drop the bridge. So um, that is, uh, that's the entire event handler script right there. Um, and so let's go back into DCS and, and run it.
Okay, here we are in DCS. The astute among you will realize this is actually just footage from the video that I released uh, a little while back, um, which was the, the Devotion Bridge trailer video. Um, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time flying this mission again. I will just uh, fast forward it up to the point where we're closing in on the bridge. The thing for you to notice is that uh, while we're flying here, there's absolutely nothing going on. The script is running in the background, but there's absolutely no way to tell. Um, it doesn't do anything except wait for us to see if we hit the bridge. So let's just fast forward to the point where we can test that. Okay, so we're at the point where we're lining up on the bridge, getting it in the sights. Remember, it doesn't matter which segment of the bridge we hit. Now, what I want you to notice is when I start firing, only when I hit the bridge, here we go, starting firing, you'll actually see two explosions when I hit the bridge. One of them is the rocket, the other is actually the bridge blowing up right there. The right hand explosion there was not actually from the rocket, that was actually an explosion that was triggered from the script. And as you uh, remember from the video, we uh, go up, take a little bit of a uh, victory Immelman here. And that's basically going to be the cap on this series on basic scripting in DCS. Uh, we spent most of our time talking about some very basic stuff and running some one-time scripts. But as you can see, it's not a long step to going from there to a full mission script that actually operates on an event handler. Um, there's an awful lot more to learn if you really want to get into scripting. Um, if you really are interested in the subject, uh, feel free to drop by my Discord channel and talk about it. There's some guys there with a lot more coding experience than I have. Hope you've enjoyed this series on uh, Lua scripting in DCS. Please like and subscribe as per usual. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick. Signing off.